people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and finally, eight and a half years later, I can happily say that I just got done watching the official Five Nights at Freddy's movie. And so in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys my spoiler-free reaction and review to the film, because I just got done seeing it like an hour ago. The film has been out in the UK for a couple of days now. The premiere happened on like the 23rd or 24th, so reviews have been out there for quite a bit. And Universal did send me an invite very kindly for a screening yesterday, though unfortunately, I couldn't make it, so I had to make do for Thursday previews tonight. But if you're watching this video in the States, tomorrow on the 27th is when the film officially releases. And also tomorrow, I'm going to be having a spoiler reaction where we talk about all the juicy secrets, the Easter eggs, the lore, the ending. But today, we're sticking spoiler free, and let's just hop right into it. The first thing I want to do is give just a massive congratulations to Scott, Jason, Emma, the cast, the crew, Universal, Blumhouse, literally everyone, including Jim Henson's, who worked on the film, because even though it has taken so long, eight and a half years since it was announced back in like 2015, they took their time, Scott and Jason were especially so patient, and in the end, they finally did it, they made a film for, basically just for us FNAF fans, that's what they said, and that's also pretty much exactly what the movie gives you. Going back to reviews, you may have noticed that critics and general audiences aren't a big fan of the FNAF film right now. Currently, it sits at like 30% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is definitely not good, let me tell you that. And while I do want to start this video off by going into positives, I do just want to give a disclaimer, this film is not perfect. It is not for everyone. And even though I think 30% is extremely low, a bit too low in my opinion, there are quite a lot of flaws with this film. And I do think it's important, especially for us FNAF fans, to not ignore the flaws and just accept this film because it's FNAF, we're FNAF fans, so we gotta love it. If we want the franchise to grow, benefit, and have possible future films be better and bigger, we do need to give honest criticism and feedback. So just as a disclaimer, I'm not trying to be a fake FNAF fan he here who's ungrateful for a FNAF film. There's just, there are unfortunately some negatives to the film. But like I said, first up, let's kick this video off with some positives because the main thing I need to gush about is the set design for the pizzeria and the practical effects used for the animatronic characters. Jim Henson's Creature Shop, of course, worked on the animatronic characters and they knocked it out of the park. Probably some of their best work in a very, very long time. Like when people think of Jim Henson's Creature Shop, their minds probably immediately go to the Muppets or Dark Crystal, but now after this film, FNAF is definitely gonna be up on that list. The animatronics just look phenomenal. The material, the sound effects used when they walk around, you can really feel and hear just how heavy and menacing they are. The puppeteers do such a fantastic job operating the animatronics, and when the characters are being worn by people, the actors do such a fantastic job at replicating animatronic movement. There are some scenes when I feel like when the animatronics are trying to be all happy and supportive of the characters and not menacing like in the nighttime, they do seem a bit lifeless. We can see just how expressive these characters can get in those vlogs that the uh, content creators took when they visited the set. Like when those vlogs went up, every single FNAF fan was like, oh my gosh, look at how, you know, emotional these guys are. Look at how reactive they are. Look at how amazing their personalities are. So when they're in that daytime mode and they're interacting with the kids and being all happy instead of creepy, I do feel like they did a bit better job at working on those personalities in those vlogs than the film itself. But either way, you can tell that the people behind the costumes and the animatronics were fantastic. The set design is also freaking incredible. The inside of the pizzeria is really just a dream come true to see on the big screen. It doesn't at all look like what the FNAF 1 establishment looks like, but honestly, I think that's for the better. It's the film's own take and the filmmaker's own take on what Freddy Fazbear's would be like if it was made in real life and they knocked it out of the park. They've even got those funny little poster, like if you've ever been to Chuck E. Cheese during that time, they've got the funny little posters with all the characters and like, different scenarios and, and ripping on different types of media. Thinking about it now, there were a few scenes that were in the teasers and the trailers that were not in the final film. I'd assume that's just because they were cut, which is pretty unfortunate, but one of those does involve the place running and operating during the daytime. That was something I was very much looking forward to, and I was really disappointed that we didn't get to see that. And I do think there's going to be a group of FNAF fans who kind of don't like the direction they take with the characters and of course them having a personality. Because while of course there are plenty of scenes of the animatronics being creepy in the dark, stalking their prey and eventually attacking, there are still quite a few scenes where they're 
like I said, happy, interacting with people, being all goofy and funny, but overall the characters were just insane. Absolutely amazing to see the FNAF gang up on the big screen, that's something we've been waiting years for, and the way it was executed, honestly, was pretty damn perfect. Moving on now to the human cast of characters in the film, let's kick this off with Josh Hutcherson, who plays Mike, a character I was pleasantly surprised with. At first, I was kind of iffy on Mike's character because he seemed pretty rude, honestly. It took a little bit for me to fully understand the character, his motives, the way he views things in his world, but once I was able to understand that, I really did fall in love with Mike. And not in a weird way, though Josh Hutcherson did a fantastic job in this film, and I think Emma Tammy said it best, like, this is a brand new start for Hutcherson's career. I really do hope we can see him in more films, because, again, he was fantastic in this. Piper Rubio, who plays Abby, Mike's younger sister, was just really, really adorable. The way she interacts with not only the animatronic characters, but also every other human around her. She's just super, super sweet. Again, another character it took a little bit for me to warm up to because at the start, the dynamic with Mike and Abby is a bit off-putting. But again, once you get into the backstory, once you start to see things from the point of view of Abby, it really, you know, the puzzle pieces fall into place and you're like, oh, that's why she's like this. And you really do feel for her. And eventually it's a relationship that just came full circle around towards the end. And I really, really love the dynamic that Piper Rubio and Josh have on screen. They're fantastic together. Their chemistry is super, super adorable, really. Next up, we have Elizabeth Lail as Vanessa Shelley, the police officer who appears to have some influence from Vanessa from Security Breach, which when that was announced, a lot of people were like, this is a little weird, and I'm not gonna lie, it is a little weird. I don't think her character is completely bad, some of the dialogue she has is kind of rough around the edges, but Elizabeth Lale does the best she can with the screenplay she gets, because Elizabeth Lale is a fantastic actress. I've seen her in a lot of media, I really, really do like her performance on screen, and here, once again, it's another knock out of the park. Her character is one of those characters that will likely get mixed reactions, both from newcomers to the FNAF franchise, but also legacy fans, because... Again, it's kind of a new character introduced within this time period of the franchise, and it's a little messy how she's, you know, incorporated into the story. I don't think it was done terribly, and again, this could just be because I'm not used to having a character like her inside of this time period of the franchise, so maybe newcomers will like it. I'm not entirely sure. I'd love to know your thoughts on Vanessa if you've seen the film. Moving on to Steve Raglan being played by Matthew Lillard. Another actor I am absolutely in love with. I love everything that Matthew Lillard does, and to see him in another villain role was absolutely refreshing. I just wish it lasted longer. Lillard is such a fantastic, brilliant, emotional actor, and he's still got it. He's still got that Stu Marker in him, Scream fans. I just, I feel like he was so underutilized in the film, which is very, very disappointing. Though, when he is on Scream, Scream, <laughs> Scream. When he is on screen, he absolutely steals the show. He is a highlight, highlight, highlight of the film. And again, my only complaint is I wish he was just in it a bit more. There are still more casting characters that we can talk about, like Max and Carl and Hank and Aunt Jane, but I don't really want to talk about them too, too much because then we get into spoiler territory. I will say characters like those, again, felt a little shoehorned in, though the actors and actresses did the absolute best they can with the dialogue and the screenplay they got. There are personalities, backstories, connections with these characters. They're not just shoehorned in to add some more bodies to the kill count. Going down the cast list, we got the Ghost Kids. Again, not going to talk about them too much because that'll definitely get into spoiler territory. Though, for the little acting they have in the film, I thought they did a pretty damn good job. They are kids. I know how difficult it can be to work with kids in film and media, so I think they did a pretty damn good job. Also, someone I want to give a massive shout out to is Bailey Winston, who plays Kim. Her character is just so sweet. <laughs> you know, she's, she's in the film for for a little bit as the, you know, person on the security training tape at Freddy's, but she's so lovely. I really hope she comes back. She does such a fantastic job. Secrets, Easter eggs, cameos I'm not going to get into in this video, though I will say there's a lot for you guys to be on the lookout for. Whenever there was some Easter egg or secret that my audience noticed in the theater, everyone just erupted in, in applause. It was truly fantastic, especially because the secrets and Easter eggs are pretty damn unexpected. Definitely Easter eggs and references to other forms of FNAF media I was not expecting. So when they popped up on the screen, I was like, what? They did that? That is absolutely crazy. And still just thinking about them, as you can see, it's a massive smile on my face. So when Jason and Emma said that there are a lot of secrets, FNAF fans are going to love it. You know, we made this film for FNAF fans. 
they were not lying. I think it was wonderfully directed. I, w I know a lot of people were kind of hesitant on Emma Tammy directing, or Tommy, I think it's Tommy, directing the film because when people looked at her IMDb page, there wasn't much to go off of. But honestly, like Emma knocked it out of the park. She's absolutely going to be a staple in the film industry nowadays. And I really, really do hope that she sticks around for Again, if they do more FNAF films, I'd love to have Emma back on board. You can tell she really, really understands and trusts Scott's world that he's created. And by the way, fantastic to have Scott on board. It was revealed that he was on set like basically every single day looking over every single shot they were doing. And that just adds to this film being made for FNAF fans because Scott was there overlooking the entire thing. Touching briefly into the story because quite frankly, that's where the majority of criticisms for the film fall into it's FNAF. The story is going to be complex. For us FNAF fans, it was not difficult for me to understand what's going on with these ghost kids, what's going on with all these missing kids, and why were they murdered? Who murdered them? What's the deal with this guy over here? Hey, what's the big idea here? But when I reflected on the film, I was like, wait, I don't think they connected that. I don't think they truly revealed why that happened or who this person was. And so I think that's where the large majority of criticism for the film screenplay and story is going, because if you're not a FNAF fan, you're gonna have so, so many questions, which again, is the bad side of why of this film being made for FNAF fans, because general audiences and critics they don't, they don't know what's going on. Who's this William Afton fellow? What are these missing kids doing here? And being honest, I took a look back at that Reddit post that Scott posted about all the scrapped screenplays, and I was looking at them, and I'm like, they scrapped this screenplay for this reason, but I just saw that in this movie. I think the main, main reason why this film is being so neg negatively reviewed in critics' eyes is because they just don't understand what's going on. And again, that's because this film was made for FNAF fans, but to be successful overall, you have to cater to everyone. But also, there's gonna be a large majority of FNAF fans who don't enjoy this movie. I'm gonna be honest and say, I did not find this scary in the slightest. There's a few jump scares here and there, but they don't really add up to anything. The horror is almost completely absent, I'd say. The second act of this film is almost entirely campy, it's something that Again, I don't think FNAF fans would enjoy. So it really, it, it starts to get confusing who this film was made for. And again, if you couldn't tell, this is me getting into the negative side of the film, though of course I do still love and respect this film, everyone who's worked on the film. I just think it is very important for us to give constructive criticism because otherwise how else are we going to evolve as a fan base and get better films in the future? I think as sweet and as amazing as it was to watch this film as a FNAF fan and go, oh my god, I, you know, I recognize this bit of lore, or oh my gosh, that's that secret thing from that secret piece of media that I recognize, other people are going to be like, what the hell am I watching? How does that make any sense? That doesn't make any sense. And I think if they do end up making a sequel film, they really have to keep in mind, they're not just making these films for FNAF fans, they're making films that everyone is going to see. And if you're gonna target a specific group of people, you gotta go all in or you gotta step way back. Because while there are a lot of confusing bits about the story that general movie go goers will not understand, it also, it, it tries to be so many genres and take so many directions at once that it kind of loses itself. It kind of loses its identity of what it's trying to go for. Like I said, at some points, it is a horror film. You know, you got characters jumping out. You do got kills, though they're kind of questionable kills because it is PG-13, so you don't really get to see much. And other times, all the characters are quite literally dancing around having a fun time in the main stage area. It's, it's just kind of weird, you know? I think I've said everything I want to say. I never like doing, oh, I rate this blah, blah, blah out of 10, or I think this is five stars or A plus or whatever. So again, if you listen to my review of the film, you'll know what to expect. If you're a FNAF fan, you will adore this film. To a fault, maybe, because I've seen a lot of FNAF fans who are giving this 10 out of 10, peak fiction, when quite frankly, again, I do think we should be giving a bit of criticism at least just so the future films and other projects for FNAF can get better. Because while I don't think this is a bad film, I do think it was worth the eight year wait. As a FNAF fan, I shouldn't really have to say, as a FNAF fan, this was worth the wait. I should be able to say, as a fan of going to see movies, this was worth the wait. But if you're a fan of FNAF and you've been waiting so long, I do think you're gonna find a lot of qualities in this film. If you're not really familiar with FNAF, I'd say at the very least stream it on Peacock. I do think it releases tonight, which I'm not a fan of the day and date release on Peacock. I do think it should have just been in cinemas, but 
whatever. Hopefully they learn their lesson because, I mean, this film is already going to be making bank. It's eyeing like 50 to 85 million this weekend, which is crazy. The second best opening weekend for this fall, right behind Taylor Swift's Eras Tour. Which, by the way, ooh, 1989 Taylor's version at midnight. We're eating good. But anyway, tomorrow, like I said, we're going to talk all things spoilers, that ending, those post-credit scenes, because there are post-credit scenes, cameos, secrets, Easter eggs, all that good stuff going in-depth on the kills and basically everything in the film, the story, the lore, the juicy lore. So subscribe if you want to keep talking about all things FNAF movie, but that's it for my review. Again, I don't like doing 5 out of 10s or 10 out of 10s or whatever. If you're a FNAF fan, go watch it. You're gonna enjoy yourself, I promise you. If you're kind of on the fence about the film, you don't know too much about FNAF, again, I think it's worth a watch, though maybe on a second monitor on Peacock. That's gonna do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts and theories and reviews on the FNAF movie in the comments down below if you've seen it, and I'll see you all on the flip side. Goodbye.